How are we doing? Doing good, doing good. How are you doing? Sorry, uh, <laughs> I have to keep my camera off. <laughs> it's no fit this year, and uh, I'm in my unfinished basement. So, uh, no, 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 no problem. What was the last time we spoke? Maybe like a year and a half ago or so. Oh God, I have no idea. It's been a while. I'm just tweeting out that we're talking to you, everybody. This is his page. If you had, have any interest in Borussia Dortmund Bundesliga, he's a great follow. I've been following him for. A long time. I mean, a long time. I now follow like over a thousand people, but I feel like he might have been a follow. I did it within my first a hundred follows, which is, uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember when you started your YouTube channel. Okay. Like I was, I was there when you when you actually started. I, we were still following each other. So, uh, yeah, you're a you're an OG then in my footballing world. Um, well, that's, yeah. But I, I guess last time I would have had you on my podcast, it would have been about. Who? I don't Pulisic, even maybe. Pulisic? Huh. Okay. Man, that was a while ago then. Um, okay, so basically, Stefan, um, I'm going to start off with the same question I've been asking all my guests when we talk Jaden Sancho. When I say the name Jaden Sancho, what are the emotions that come over you? Well, my, my emotion uh, at, at this point is a, a little bit of sadness and pity, obviously, um, because... Uh, I think he had a very stellar career ahead of him when he sort of uh, had a really meteoric, meteoric rise at Dortmund and it did not pan out that way at Manchester United. Uh, yeah, he became a, <laughs> a very sad football player, uh, obviously uh, rekindled that a little bit uh, when he rejoined Dortmund for that half season. But uh, I feel like it's a lot of uh, wasted potential right now. So I think these are sort of the e emotions. Um, uh, for, for a player that I really thought was going to be in the maybe top five of European football, maybe top ten from a skill set here, but but yeah, did not quite did not quite make the breakthrough in the Premier League as many uh -oh. had hoped. Yep. Uh when he was being an absolute baller for Dortmund the first time, right? Yes. And then he finally made the move to Manchester United. Did you think it was gonna go really well at United? No. Honestly, uh, just from the experience of how Shinji Kagawa fared at uh, Manchester United and uh, the, I don't know, <laughs> dark hole that Manchester United is, really. Uh, I never really had, uh, I don't know, that obviously in the back of your head, you, you know the skill he has, and in general, that should translate to pretty much every club that he plays in. But uh, yeah, he was always a, a player that needed to be uh, cherished, let's say, by his by his coaches that needed a lot of trust, and I always felt like the line stand that is Manchester United uh, was going to be uh, difficult for him. So, um, yeah, uh, it's obviously sad how how it worked out, but uh, I wasn't at all surprised that it didn't. So, more of a United thing rather than a Sancho thing is what you're saying. Because I, I feel like he might also find it tricky to, to really translate his skills uh, onto the football field at, at Chelsea. I, I do think that uh, Manchester United certainly are a team that are not entirely helpful to, to players. And uh, his problems with Ten Hag uh, probably were also very personal. But uh, that being said, I'm not entirely sure uh, if, if he's going to be super happy uh, at, at Chelsea either. Because he is certainly a, a player that needs to be a starter, to really perform well, and uh, needs to feel the full trust of his coach. So mm -hmm. I don't know if if uh, that is if Chelsea is the right spot for him in, in that regard either. If I'm if I'm honest, Dortmund certainly could not afford his wages to to sign him to a permanent deal or or anything. So he had to look elsewhere. But uh, yeah, I, I'm I also honestly can't tell you if, if Chelsea is like the perfect fit for Jaden Sancho. Yeah, no, that's fine. I, I don't be able to. I'm not expecting you to be able to, you know, accurately predict how it'll go at Chelsea. Listen, people who pay attention to Chelsea every day, like myself and everybody in the chat, we can't predict anything with our club. We are <laughs> very unpredictable at the moment, to say the least. Uh, but with Dortmund, that that half season that he just played there, how good did he look or how good did he not look? How, how do you think he looked? Uh, let's put it this way. Um he obviously had a couple of struggles uh, in the beginning because uh, it was like almost half a season he didn't really play football, hardly trained uh, with Manchester United because he was uh, booted even from the training ground, as far as I know. So um, it, it took a bit, um, but 
Uh, what I will say is that he is maybe not the same Jaden Sancho that left Borussia Dortmund uh, the first time. However, uh, what Dortmund did find was a player that A, can still decide games with his skill set. It's very important to a player that can uh, beat his opponents uh, on the one on one, which is, I think, is his best skill. Uh, also, someone that, um, uh, yeah, just knows how to score goals and assists. You know, all, all these skill sets are still very much there. But what I will say is, um, obviously, I think your listeners want to hear the positive, positive stuff first. Um, is that you had a very well-rounded and mature player because. And mature player, sorry, you gotta make sure that people don't hear immature. Um, because especially on the Champions League nights, you could see that Jaden Sancho has understood, uh, versus what he did not quite do previously, that uh, football is a very uh, rounded sport where you also need to play off the ball really well. And he has uh, sort of uh, done that too. And uh, I think defensively, uh, he has been become a very solid player and knows sort of what spaces to uh, move into when he is off the ball. So I think overall that has had me very impressed that he has matured as a as a footballer and sort of understood what needs to be done to perform well in, in high profile games. And I think this is sort of the, the biggest takeaway, um, especially in the matchups against PSG and the first leg. Um, he really was... Uh, one of the biggest difference makers in the second leg, uh, the away leg, he, he was still pretty integral to. Um, so I think Chelsea does receive a very intelligent player, a uh, player that can dribble, but also knows when to step on the ball, when to circulate possession, and and overall uh, uh, has the discipline now um, to really uh, play football from, from all of his, its aspects, if that makes sense. It, it does. And if anything, what you just said there from a footballing standpoint, Stefan, makes me feel good about the acquisition because Maresca wants someone who, I mean, Nani just said it, and I think Jaden Sancho actually said it in his little intro interview. Maresca would like someone that if he's got a decent 1v1 opportunity to take the 1v1 and create something. Um, but obviously, if it's not there, be able to, you know, hold possession, be able to pass it, you know, recycle, retain possession. Um, so it does sound like Sancho, from a playing perspective, should fit in fairly well with what Maresca is looking for. But like you said, you're more worried about how is he going to come in and be someone who is not guaranteed minutes, is just one of the guys uh, on a long list of guys who Maresca has to kind of focus on and decide between. So I, I guess you're more worried about it from a uh, 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 a vibe a standpoint, like right, a vibe and atmosphere <laughs> standpoint. Yes, yeah. That that is really the big question mark. Can Chelsea uh, make him feel at home and make him right. feel wanted? Because uh, when when he returned to Dortmund, to him, that those were like the most important things. Sort of the the feeling that he is there uh, with the ability to help his team. And not just be sort of an outcast and an outsider. And obviously, what what massively helped is that he has a very deep friendship with Marco Reus. And right. obviously, Marco Reus is now also no longer playing for Borussia Dortmund. So that hey, you got Marco him. Reus's agent's number. I want to get him on the show. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have it anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I tried. I, I I might have deleted that um, when I stopped working for ESPN. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, no, Marco Royce, uh, certainly no, an LA Galaxy. <laughs> so yeah, would be an interesting time to talk to his agent, uh, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, so I think what is important for Jaden Sancho is that he makes friends at Chelsea and people are being nice to him. So sort of, that's that's a very, very simplistic way to look at it. But uh, I, I know him for long enough to know that this affects his, his uh, performance on the field. Uh, quite a lot that he is in a in a mentally stable and in a happy place. Yeah. Well, hopefully he does feel at home. And I put that in quotes, you know, because London is, of course, where he's from. And he did grow up a Chelsea fan. And furthermore, uh, there's a little background there with Enzo Maresca, knew of Maresca, and uh, definitely knows uh, our head of scouting, Joe Shields. And that's kind of the guy mainly responsible for bringing 
Sancho to Chelsea. So hopefully we have the right environment for him. Because Stefan, I don't need to tell you, if this doesn't go well for Sancho, I know he's just 24, but he's looking at the threat of being irrelevant. Well, my hope is that he completely flops at Chelsea and that he realizes that uh, he needs to reduce his wages and eventually end up back at, at Dortmund because uh, I do think that Dortmund have, have a use for him. Uh, <laughs> so uh, from a very selfish uh, uh, attitude, that, that is sort of my approach because uh, he has shown that he can perform at Dortmund. He has not shown that he can perform anywhere else uh, professionally. I, I think... Um, your uh, your friend Shane one two three four eight eight has asked what uh, Jaden Sancho has lost between his first and his second at Dortmund, and uh, yeah, maybe I want to say he's not as explosive anymore. Maybe a, a f he's maybe a few steps slower, and maybe uh, he has um, lost sort of the um, I don't know the, the risk taking of of a really young player, if that makes sense, uh, where you just run into dribbles completely carefree and do whatever you you think uh, you want to do in this situation I, I think he has become a little bit more of a heady player which uh, in some areas of the game is beneficial but uh, sort of the uh, completely crazy I do uh, ridiculous back heel tricks kind of uh, version of Jane Sancho I've not seen as much in, in the second scene of Dortmund if that makes sense if that answers the question Yep, no, it does. We have a power chat here and it's uh, directed at you. So let's ask it. It's ALXIBZ saying one question for Stefan. Aubameyang, Pulisic, Dembele, Isak, Holland, Sancho, and all others sold for Bundesliga top money and they can't afford his wages. What does Dortmund do with their money? <laughs> well, I think Premier League wages are still quite much more than Bundesliga wages. I, I think people often don't realize how much more players, average Premier League players earn in comparison to, to Bundesliga players. So uh, obviously paying Jadon Sancho the salary that, that Chelsea are paying him right now could be on paper affordable, but he is just not that highly rated, if that makes sense. So I don't think they would make him an, an absolute top earner. Um, I think Dortmund players right now, the, the top earns about maybe 11 million euros, maybe 12 million euros, maybe with bonuses you can get up to 50 million euros per season. But it's, that's sort of the, the, the limit. And I think at, at Chelsea, that's more of an average uh, than the absolute top. Maybe you, you know it better than me, but what does the absolute top earner at Chelsea uh, earn currently? Uh, well, if we had Champions League, it would be like 250k, and that would be Reese, but that's way higher now than what we're trying to get players on. I forgot that you do it uh, per month. <laughs> or is that per week? No, that's per week. That's yeah. per week. Yeah. Right. Yeah, obviously not per month. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know how that translates because I'm not that good as, at math, but uh, yeah. Also, you can compare Bayern wages to Dortmund wages because Bayern Munich... Uh, in their turnover are still uh, another entire category over uh, above Borussia Dortmund. So Bayern can pay wages that Dortmund can't, which is why well, Bayern have, high wages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is they, why they, Bayern have won the league, I think, uh, 10 out of the last 11 times. And obviously Bayer Leverkusen were a bit of a fluke. Um, but but overall, um, the hegemony in the, in the Bundesliga is... Uh, how it is that Bayern earn about twice as much as the second richest team. And then uh, there's, there's after that golf, um, there comes Dortmund. Uh, and yeah, obviously not competitive with uh, big Premier League teams. But as Khan points out, I think the reason why the power chat was asked was because you guys sell players for, ins I mean, you guys do insanely well when we talk about a net positive. The most you've ever paid for a player is what like 35 for hauler or something like that yeah something or, something around that yeah and then and then you've sold players many of them for way 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 more yeah but like i said before uh Borussia Dortmund does not have a russian oligarch <laughs> uh, sitting somewhere no do we. we don't either anymore yeah but but also the the tv deals of the of the premier league are also a little bit uh, different of the bundesliga so Dortmund sort of need that money alone to uh, to have a regular uh, wage bill that they have. So unfortunately, uh, just having uh, 
ludicrous transfer fees like selling Bellingham for I don't know 100 million or so unfortunately does not uh, translate in into having a, a really high wedge bill at the same time it's unfortunately not how how the financials go uh, people also always bemoan that Dortmund just can't one for one reinvest the money they make because obviously they still have to pay about I think 30 percent taxes of every uh, transfer income they make so you know if you make a hundred million then basically you have maybe 70 million or so um to to play with so unfortunately the, the german government or whoever is also taking some money of that as well fair enough all right well i'm just gonna basically ask you your gut feeling Jaden sancho pictures and training just just popped up actually at this moment so what do you think? You think Jaden Sancho is going to at all be a success at Chelsea? Yeah, I think I think he'll he'll be a a decent role player, but I don't know if he's going to be an out and out starter. Uh, I don't I don't know. Looking at the talent that's at Chelsea, I I think that he'll he'll be competitive in in, in you know competing for a starting role, but I just don't think uh, long term it's it's going to work out. That's sort you of my gut he, feeling. You think he goes to Borussia Dortmund eventually for the third time? Yeah, maybe. Or, or just some somewhere else. I don't know. But uh, do, you, do you think he would have stayed at Borussia Dortmund if it worked out financially? I think so. Yeah, I think had Dortmund uh, managed to make him an offer uh, that uh, he would have uh, taken on in terms of his his wages, I think it would have uh, worked out. But so you don't think that he cares or cared enough about proving that he can play in the Premier League? Because if he just goes to Dortmund, right? and stays there then he basically is admitting that he couldn't hang in the Premier League I don't know I mean you really have to consider at some point if you're if you're happy doing what you're doing and what you need to prove to yourself maybe and to others uh is certainly an aspect but I think if he has found a happy place in Dortmund and realized that uh, this is sort of where he wants to be and I mean he had a run to the Champions League final and uh, was darn near close to winning the Champions League there so I mean, you can fulfill your dreams playing in the black and yellow as well. Um, and and whether uh, Dortmund are a long-term project that excites you or not. Um, but that being said, maybe you're right. Obviously, I've not talked to Jaden personally, so I don't know what exactly motivates him. Maybe uh, making it in the Premier League is, is a goal for him that uh, stands above all. I honestly can tell you that. Uh, if it is, then uh, yeah, I'm sure he will have learned from his first stint at Manchester United and... Uh, will i think surely apply these uh, learnings uh, to his now time at chelsea so uh, like i said he's a more mature player so uh, maybe in <laughs> a part of me wants this to fail but uh, I, the, on the other hand i want him to be happy and uh, i i hope for him that it that it works out and that he feels at home at, at chelsea and has some success in the premier league because he certainly has the skill set to do that Fair enough. Uh, last question for you. Did Chelsea screw up by getting rid of Ian Matson? Uh Yes and no, uh, because he has been tremendous for Dortmund, but Dortmund also do not have left backs. <laughs> so uh, I just don't know if his um, physique is, is Premier League ready because he is uh, very lightweight. And uh, let's say the defensive aspects of his games were uh, not not perfectly rounded yet so certainly a talent and certainly I would have enjoyed him uh, still at Dortmund but I don't think uh, it is the the worst thing in the world if uh, Chelsea don't have Ian Martin I, I see his upside but he is not quite uh, the ready player yet for the ambitions that Chelsea have so I think um, if he I think he went to Aston Villa right uh, yep. I think uh, for his own sake and his development I think it's probably better to to be there than rather at Chelsea because yes he is a uh, attacking minded left back that uh, for Dortmund in build up actually switched to central midfield uh, because of skill set is, is so that he can uh, sort of play this hybrid role um, but uh, when you count on him to really defend uh, the left side as a left back uh, he might struggle every now and then and obviously famously did uh, someone talked about Dortmund fumbling the Champions League final? Um, yeah, he did sort of uh, seal it for Real Madrid by having an atrocious back pass in the end that decided the, the game completely. So um, yeah, still a very young, very raw talent. Um, 
uh, obviously nice to have, but I would say from a Chelsea perspective, it is not the end of the world that he's no longer on your roster. Fair enough. That's very balanced, uh, very fair take. Well, Stefan Busco, thank you so much yet again for joining me on a show of mine. I really, really appreciate it. You're in Philly? Yeah, I'm fi I'm in Philly right now, yes. I've I've moved. Oh, shit. I've been making so many business trips, so to speak, in Philly lately. Uh, I'll let you know when I'm next there. All right. All right. Well, cool. shout out to the chat. Uh, it was nice. Uh, <laughs> I live here. <laughs> the chat's Boom. wild, man. Don't, listen, if you can make it through a half hour with the chat, then you can make it through anything in life. <laughs> yeah, someone is asking what kind of business trips you're making. <laughs> huh? I said someone is asking what kind of business trips you're making. Uh, can't, can't tell chat too much. Alex, I always got to be careful. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> my life is here on display for everybody. So it's already too late for me, basically, <laughs> to keep any privacy. But yeah. Um, well, anyway, thank you so much. Thanks for being a good sport. Sometimes when I bring on non-Chelsea people, it gets pretty nasty for them. So, Stefan, a top it's man fun. as always. I really appreciate it. I can handle it. Go Sixers. <laughs> there you go. All right. Some Americanism. Goodbye, everyone. All right. Well, that was Stefan. And uh, yeah, he's always been a fun.